It's always a pleasure for me to be able to come back to SSC, although I will tell you it becomes more and more unnerving for me as I realize that a vast majority, if not pretty much all of you, were not born when I was coming to conference. So it was a little bit more than a little while ago since I've been at conference. What makes this speech even more stressful for me today is the fact that we have a very special guest amongst us. For 13 years, Mrs. Mito was our HSSC SSC advisor. She counseled, she congratulated, she consoled, and she scolded many, many of us. She taught us life skills that you can't get from any textbook and instilled in us a sense of discipline and ethics that continues to guide many of us. I am where I am today because teachers and mentors like Mrs. Mito um, took me under their wing, cared for me, um, and never gave up on me. And on behalf of the thousands of lives I know she touched, would you please help me give her a warm SSC welcome. <laughs> talk about representation. Now, if any of you have heard my speeches before or come to my workshop at SLW, then you know that I often stress representing the underrepresented. In my day, we called them the invisible students. You know who they are. The ones who keep to themselves, don't participate in extracurricular activities, and chances are would not be missed by many if they were gone. But there are many other students. I have no doubt some in this very room that are invisible in their own way, dealing with issues and challenges you and I could never imagine, struggling to keep their problems invisible in an effort to be normal. And while many of them are very successful in hiding their problems, we know the statistics all too well. This is the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. And as student leaders, we need your help if we're gonna change anything. For any of you who have testified before the legislature, you know that a common question that is always raised is how do you represent all students, not just those like you? Perhaps these statistics will give you insight as to why many legislators are concerned. And let me preface this by saying that in no way should any student feel embarrassed about the circumstances they find themselves in. Now there are about 131 delegates, I believe, and ultimates here with us today. And for the purpose of the following exercises, you will represent the youth of Hawaii. And so some of you got some cards, and I know some of you wanted cards. But at this time, will everyone with an A card please stand up? Okay. As difficult as it is to just concentrate on being a student, we know that 18.9% of children in Hawaii live in poverty. Those of you standing up represent your classmates and friends who have that added burden of not knowing where their next meal will come from and where they'll sleep at night. Add to this fact that one in 10 children have at least one parent unemployed, and we don't need any statistics to tell us what this does to the family unit and the strain and the abuse that can come from it. You may be seated. Now will everyone with a B card please stand up? You represent the 7% of students who have missed at least one day of class in the last month because they feel unsafe or scared to go to school. Whether it be bullying, stalking, or other forms of harassment, you represent those students who feel that oftentimes, even with adult intervention, they are running out of options to keep themselves safe. Thank you, you may be seated. I know it's getting a little depressing, but don't worry, there's an up note to all of this. On a slightly different note, how many of you here believe that if all else fails for a student, they can always join the military? You don't have to have any college, they have got good benefits, and chances are you can start off with a bonus. Raise your hands. How many feel that military is always an option, a good option for anyone? Well, okay, I thought I'd have more hands than that. <laughs> now at this time, I'd like everyone with a C card to please stand. Hey. 
those of you not seated, seated, so standing, represent the 38% who are ineligible for military service because of low ASVAB scores. Hawaii ranks last in the country, and the statistics broken down across the counties are even more extreme on the neighbor islands for those in which military is not an option. Thank you, you may be seated. Now by a show of hands, how many of you believe you will graduate from high school on time and obtain an associate's degree in three years and a bachelor's by six years? Raise your hands, okay? I expect all of your hands to be up. That's really good. Now, I'll say this first. I don't want any of you to get discouraged by this final statistic, but could I have all of those with a D card please stand up? Those standing represent the only 13 out of 109th graders who will graduate from high school and obtain a post-secondary degree on time. And if there's one thing that has been shown to be consistent across the country, it's that the longer it takes for you to obtain a degree, the less likely you are to obtain the degree at all. Thank you. You may all be seated and I thank you for being brave participants. I know no one's gonna take a card from me ever again if I'm invited back to speak. Which brings me to your themes. Our voice gives us a choice. Now you might be wondering how these statistics relate to the theme of your conference. In my humble opinion, there are many reasons why the statistics are the way that they are. Some recognizably completely out of our control but fundamentally to how we got there in many cases is a failure to communicate. And as a result, gaps have been created and people have fallen through. Your theme, our voice, our choice, gives us a choice, excuse me, your theme, our voice, gives us a choice, represents an opportunity to bridge those gaps. I have long believed that by helping others find their voice, we can better hear our own. When I was Woodward District Student Council President a long time ago, I made it my mission to engage every school and every single representative, which led me to these three young gentlemen here. This is how they looked when I first met them in the beginning. A little lost, slightly confused, overwhelmed, but quite honestly, I think they were scared of me. So to engage them, bring them in, I made them the Sergeant of Arms for Woodward District Student Council, tasking them with making sure that every school made it to the meetings and everyone was involved in some way, shape, or form. I drove out to meet them at their school and briefed them on the issues and procedures they would have to know when they got to, to conference. And guess what? By the time we got to conference, they were shining stars. They were selected to serve on issue panels, other delegates sat in silence when they spoke, and they carried themselves in a way that made our entire district very proud. In the end, one of them was even elected Winter District Student Council Vice President for the following school year. These were my Olamana boys from Olamana School. And while I have not seen them since I graduated, I've never stopped thinking about them. It would have been very easy to have let them hide in a corner, not participate, stay silent, but I can tell you that one of all the things that I did in high school, helping them find their voice was one of my greatest lessons learned. And then there was Irma May, and yes, that's me on the side as well, <laughs> whose belief in my voice has carried me on through today. It was a simple, warm fuzzy tucked into my envelope at night, but it has been at my side during some of my most difficult moments all these years. It actually looks like this. I don't care how self-actualized you think you are, there will always be moments of doubt, times when you aren't so sure of your own voice. And that's when I pull out Irma's note and remind myself that amidst all of the yelling, somebody believed my voice was important. In the end, it really is our choice to believe in the power of our own voice and to help others find theirs. 17 years ago, when I served on the Senate Education Committee as a non-voting student member, our annual, now annual especially, BOE voting student member bill came up for a hearing. During testimony, I reminded my peers who were testifying in support of the measure that there were multiple pathways to positive student representation, <laughs> other ways for our voices to be heard. I truly believed it then, and I believe that it still is relevant now. As you continue the good fight for voting rights for the Board of Education member, don't forget that there are other ways to make your voices heard should you choose to go down that path. Groups like Kanu Hawaii and their Youth Fellows Program, 
considering multiple non-voting member representation on the Board of Education, as is done in other states and jurisdictions, or looking at it from what we call the 30,000 foot level and redefining what the Hawaii State Student Council and Secondary Student Conference is and should be to best represent and advocate on behalf of Hawaii's youth. Now that you've embraced the power of your own voice, and with my prodding will definitely go out and help others find their own, your conference theme is absolutely right. You have a choice. And here's the beauty about choice and those statistics that I shared with you. In the end, they're just statistics. Numbers based on probability and someone else's actions and decisions, not your own. If we were strictly living by statistics without the element of choice, I probably shouldn't be here with you today. I was born to teenage parents during my mother's senior year at Castle High School. We lived from place to place, including Section 8 housing. My parents got divorced not once but twice. And in the end, they never got a college degree. But my parents refused to let me become another statistic. Through my parents' struggle, and their, by their example, I learned that the choice to not be defined by the statistics, to in fact defy them, is entirely our own. We can and must be more than what the world expects us to be based upon statistics and probability. But it all comes down to the choices that we make and understanding and believing in the power of our own voice. If you could all help me with one final thing, I promise you it's not gonna hurt. I'd like for all of you to stand up at this time. If I were asked by anyone what percentage of students I feel have limitless possibilities in front of them and will go on to change the world, I would say without hesitation, 100% of them. Each and every one of you here in this room today. I believe in your voices. I know you'll make good choices. And in the spirit of one of my very favorite books, may the odds be ever in your favor. Thank you and have a very safe day.